stillness and being present meditation is important. It's key to being available for whatever needs to come through you or to you from the universe. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Listen up. Nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. Well, all right. Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. <laughs> I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot. Room 303. If you are new, welcome to our crew. But my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, we'll go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome Wi-Fi's to the Ascension fatigue episode of the wireless woman i have been experiencing this for quite some time but i did not know what it was so i know that if i didn't know well maybe you didn't know so we're going to talk about ascension fatigue today but before we get into today's content you already know what time it is what are we going to do tomorrow night the same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my narcoleptic Nancys to the front of the class. It's time to put that coffee down and read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. Oh, has the world changed or have I changed? Oh, has the world changed or have I changed? The queen is dead, boys. Oh, has the world changed or have I changed? Oh, has the world changed or have I changed? Welcome to the Ascension Fatigue episode of The Wireless Woman. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Leave your comments below and by all means, share this content. So... Ascension fatigue. I had never heard of this term, but around about a year ago, I started feeling just tired all the time. And it was a different type of tired. It was like this weariness, like I've never experienced anything like being this washed out. And you know me, I'm thinking it's just because I turned 40, you know. Like, clearly, this is what 40 does to you. But what I didn't realize was that my fatigue was coinciding with the change of the age. We moved into the age of the divine feminine, what we call the age of Aquarius. Because we are at the end of an age and transitioning into a new one. There is discrepancy among experts where exactly we are. But most seem to agree that we are in a very important transition period. In Western astrology, we are transitioning from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. At the very end in December of 2020. So during that time, we were in the pandemic. And so I don't think a lot of people realize the psychological, emotional and physiological changes that were going on within each one of us because we were all in isolation. It was hard to know how those dynamics were going to play out out here in the free world. So um, around last year, you know, I, I began to notice that I was very fatigued. I had a lot of physical ailments, just a lot of sickness. And that wasn't characteristic for me, especially because I myself was coming out of isolation, not quarantine, isolation, where I had been taking really good care of myself, eating natural foods, lost a lot of weight, 
So it just really wasn't making any sense. I, I felt like I was doing everything that I could do in order to feel better, but it wasn't working. So ascension fatigue is a phenomenon that happens when you're being leveled up from one vibration to another, one dimension to another, when you are ascending. The reason why history repeats itself is because the world is cyclic and whatever goes around must come back around. There was a time that Africa ruled Europe for 800 years. And when I say ruled, I don't mean with guns and ammunition, but with knowledge, love, light, and black excellence. So now... I want you, black child, to know that we have cycled back to that time. And outside of just the physical feelings that I was feeling, I was starting to kind of not get along with people. Like there were just a lot of other elements that were going on. And, you know, when you're going through issues with people that you love and care about and you're being separated from people that used to support you, that's already depressing enough. You know, I thought maybe the fatigue was coming from depression, but all of these elements were actually working together to get me to a higher level of consciousness. A lot of people don't recognize how much their environment is a large part of how they interpret and express the universe. A lot of times people can feel like a much brighter light in a very dark room. However, all light derives its energy from some place. You know, you have to recharge crystals. You have to recharge yourself. And it takes the power of the sun in order for you to feel that energy. All of those things are a large part of your energy source. You know, if you are in a group of people and you're not able to get that energy and that support from them, you are probably the plug. I got what you love. I am your plug. I don't know if you remember, but back in the old school days with cell phones first started, you could always tell if your charger was broke, if you went to go and plug it in and instead of charging your phone, it would start to drain your battery. So you would like plug it up at 50% and then you come back and be like at 22%. I know iPhone users know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it's Samsung, but as a <laughs> Android user, you know, we have this new feature on our phones now where someone can take their phone, put it on top of your phone, and your phone will charge their phone. And a lot of us have been that for other people, not realizing that in order to prop these other people up, it's been a draining process for us. And a lot of times you don't even know your battery is low until you get that battery low alert. And for a lot of us that came through the changing of the age awake, you know, it really took something from us. Now, I know when I start talking about astrological ages and different dimensions and portals that can sound like really far off. And you would have to be a person that knows me and my personal life to know how practical I am. Like, I think it would probably freak people out who knew me before the change to hear me talking like this. But that is what the ascension cost me. It cost me people that were close to me that couldn't go with me because it's a new level of consciousness and understanding. And you have to understand, I was raised Jehovah's Witness. I was raised very staunchly, deeply in the church, which is weird because it's a very mystical thing, the things that they expect us to believe. But they tell you those things like those things are practical. So for me, I thought everybody that was like on a new age or spiritual journey was demonic, like period. There's nothing over there that we need to know about because everything exists here in the light. But what I didn't understand was how much enlightenment I was unwilling to embrace because I only had one way of seeing things. You know, God is all and he is in all. And I think sometimes for you to be able to prove or disprove anything, you have to actually investigate it. And I actually gained all of the knowledge and wisdom that I do have through investigating, through being courageously curious about wanting to know 
how things are made, what things are made up of. There were just too many things that I couldn't explain. And that let me know that the information was lacking somewhere. So with this ascension fatigue, I had never heard of this before. It is a place where all of the dimensions of who you are as a person converge. That's really what enlightenment is. It's being in touch with all of the different dimensions, chakras, elements of who you are. So for me, ascension fatigue was a spiritual heaviness, an emotional depression, a physical fatigue. I dealt with a lot of forgetfulness and still do, you know, and I think a lot of that has to do, like I said, with coming through the portal from one dimension into another, because there are certain memories you can't bring with you or else you would affect too much change in the new dimension. You know, we have to be in this new dimension, interpreting it with the new information that we've been presented. But there was this other element that I really wasn't prepared for, which was the personal attacks, the character attacks. You know, since I've come through that portal, I feel like I've dealt with a lot of very narcissistic, self-seeking people. And it's difficult to negotiate that because when you're coming from another place, when you're in the world, but not of it, it's really hard to understand those lower base motivations when you've been enlightened. So people know they need the plug, but they only want the plug in the capacity where they are being energized and draining you. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me of my energy. Ascending takes a massive amount of energy, you know, but the question is, what can you do? Because here's the, the truth of the matter. I'm starting to feel a little bit more equilibrium now. I really actually am. And I've been through this almost for a year now. And I started to think I would never be the same again. For a lot of us that feel like the best of who we are is back there. Like once I get back in shape, once I get back in the gym, once I go back to church, you know, once I get back in school, there are certain things that we lost in the fire. You know, but the fire has forged us like a phoenix. The best parts of who we are is what's left from the fire. And the greatest things that we're going to accomplish are in the future. They're ahead of us. We've done great things in the past. But we have survived this far and come through this portal to this place in order to be a greater version of everything that those things taught us. So the question is, what do we do? Because this ascension fatigue is going to last as long as it lasts. It's a part of the process. We don't know how long a butterfly should be in the cocoon. Only the butterfly knows. And I wish I could give you the answer because I'm not back to 100%. And I don't know what my new form is going to be or going to look like. I just remain hopeful about it. And this is your daily reminder that Magneto was right the war is still coming charles and i intend to fight it by any means necessary but here's what i do know i know what we do in the inner realm and it is to nourish the new consciousness the new body the new soul the new spirit so one of the things that has really helped me to remain hopeful and as consistent as possible during my transition has been fasting. You know, maintaining a balanced diet helps the body to be able to survive changing dimensions, traveling time. You know, the body is a big source of feeding the mind. If the body is competing with the mind and pulling nutrients away from the brain, you are going to deal with a lot of brain fog, you know? So the fastest way to get the body out of the way is not to put a bunch of toxins in it through your mouth because those things are competing with the mind for priority, you know, and you have to train the body to listen to the mind. You have to train the body that it's not as hungry as it believes it is. It's not as tired as it believes it is. You've just got to convince your mind to believe that and your body to listen to your mind. Um, 
also a big part of keeping your wits about you while you're going through ascension is meditation, prayer and meditation, solitude, really putting your devices down, taking time to yourself to be still and quiet, to actually listen to the messages that are coming in because we are all frequency and wavelength. And you see it as a Christian practice, you know, to like be in prayer. But oftentimes you're doing so much talking and projecting that you're not able to receive any messages from God. Like whatever you believe in, stillness and being present, meditation is important. It's key to being available for whatever needs to come through you or to you from the universe resources that you're looking for a lot of time, rest that you need, peace that you desire, companionship. A lot of it is there within you, but you got to get quiet enough and still enough to unlock the puzzle of your own mind and body in order to meet your, your needs. And this is something that's needed when times like quarantines come along. A lot of us didn't know until the quarantine came along that we were deprived (laughs) and depraved in some ways. So this is a good time to balance yourself, you know, through what you're eating, through what you're ingesting, through your eye gates and your ear gates, you know. And like I said, as I get more information, as I'm matriculating through this process, I'm going to be sure to come right here and share it with you. But the one thing that I can say for now that's going to make you of the greatest use on the next level that you're going to is to have that discipline, is to know the greatest form of who you are isn't the caterpillar, it's the butterfly. I got these butterflies put on me a while ago and didn't really know what they meant at the time but the caterpillar is a great creature for metamorphosis to teach us how the full potential sometime of a thing cannot be realized until it's willing to die for that new form so a lot of things that we lost in the fire a lot of things that we left in the past are so precious to us because they're all that we know because they're so much better in a lot of ways than where we are right now but i can promise you that the things that are separating you now separating you from close friends separating you from toxic family members and old relationships separating you from foods that you used to enjoy but now make you nauseous All of this is about raising you to the highest power of who you are. You know, death can feel a lot of times like the end, like the worst form that you're in. But every seed coat has to die in order to produce life. Whether it's a sperm that dies for the sake of an egg, whether it's a seed that dies for the sake of a flower, whether it's the caterpillar that goes into its coffin and for the sake of the butterfly is willing to be devoured. You know, this process is going to take time. Be patient with yourself. Nurture yourself. Take care of yourself. Remember, everything that the seed needs to live is inside of that shell. It's inside of that egg. Everything that a chick needs to be born from the egg is already inside of that egg. You know, and it's eating that source and fueling itself until it is strong enough to break free. And that's a picture of where you are and who you are right now. So trust the process. It will not kill you. You will endure and you will come out better for it if you take this time to process the change in a positive way. If you let it make you stronger. So as always, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. Make sure you drop me that fire headphones emoji in the comments and I look forward to engaging with you there. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed.
All right, thank you so much for sticking with this episode until the very end. If you like this content, you might want to check out this episode right here. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link here. Until the next episode, live unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.